realizing like, is it in my lane? Do I feel that it would allow me to have growth? Will the choice I make to do this, will it, will it help me move forward or hold me back? Oh, welcome to Wisdom on the Front Porch, where your front porch can be anywhere. It can be a digital cafe, a Zoom, a podcast, wherever you're getting wisdom or giving wisdom is your front porch. And today we have Chip Baker on my front porch. I am so glad you are here, Chip. Let's go. Thank you so much <laughs> uh, for having me. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, I've been looking forward to it. I always enjoy spending time with you. Um, I was in one of Chip's books called mm -hmm. Impact of Influence, Volume 6, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. uh, really great, great books that you have. Um, I remember doing a little interview with you at the shoe store about uh -huh. your books and how you got started. So our audience didn't get to hear that story. So let's hear a little bit about how, how that journey began. <laughs> Yeah, so the book journey is just my kind of some of my life journey. Which one would you like to have? Either. Well, let's start with the book and then we'll do the life right okay. after. Okay. okay. All right. So so the book journey. Uh, <clears throat> I have a YouTube channel and podcast called The Success Chronicles. And um, I came across an amazing guy, Dr. Oliver T. Reed. Shout out to him. And, uh, you know, we did some content. We did interview I interviewed him on my podcast and then you know, like, you know, we had a great time. I was like, man, hey, let's 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 connect next week and just do some topic, do a topic session, you know? So we connected the next week and did a topic session and like, man, that was fun. Let's do that again next week. So we did it again next week. And before we know it, we had gone like a month, a month and a half each week oh, like, wow. getting content. Yeah. And so he was like, man, you ever thought about uh, writing a book? And I was like, yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> it's, on the, it's on the bucket list goals. But yeah. what I didn't know is he and um, he had a buddy, uh, Kelly Cole. They, you know, uh, taught people how to write and self-publish and those kind of things. They had a self-publishing group. And so uh, he's like, man, it'd be cool for us to put, you know, some of the content that we've gotten in a book form. And so that's kind of how it, the first like my first couple books that I did was like that. Uh, then, mm -hmm. you know, that sparked into, you know, just doing a couple other books. I have a kid's book, stay on the right path, a mm -hmm. uh, couple other things. And then same thing, uh, you know, came across another great guy. I spoke at a group of the G-Men, uh, Kendall Ficklin, uh, his group, and, uh, you know, some great men in that community. And one of those guys I connected with, uh, Sugar Ray Destin, He's a, you know, Houston, well, at the time he was Austin, but he's Houston now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he reached out and he was like, man, you know, I was looking at you, some, some of your stuff. You ever thought about bringing some of those people uh, together and putting their stories in a book? And I was like, yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> yeah, we did. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was on the bucket list goals, <laughs> you know. And then, you know, we put that play into motion and, you uh, that's how the impact of influence was birthed. And, uh, you know, really uh, it was birthed. The thought was not to be a book series. It was just, I was just grateful to have a book. And so, you know, from there, you know, gathered, you know, some amazing people to share their stories on how uh, there's been, you know, people in their life or situations that have influenced them, has influenced mm -hmm. them in such a manner that it's impacted them and caused them to be who they are. And so um, they share what they learned from that and how they're using what they learned to make a positive difference in our world. And so, um, you know, after the first one, you know, some people, the same people that were in the book and some people like, man, that's a pretty cool concept. You should do that again. So we did volume two, you know, and then, uh, uh, you know, and volume one and volume two were all men. You know, I had some ladies that were, you know, I'm close to, they're like, you like what you can't put ladies in your book, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, so then we did volume three, and it was all ladies, you know. <laughs> uh, then you know, I wanted to show homage to coaches because I, you know, am a coach, a long time mm -hmm. coach, and so many coaches made a difference in my life. And yeah. so, um, wanted to show homage to them. So, volume four was coaches, and then uh, volume five through eight were mixed, uh, men 
and ladies. Um, so it's been it's been great, and we're about to drop volume nine nice. soon, and it'll be about <laughs> love. So, oh, cool! <laughs> that's kind of the the book journey. It's been amazing, and all of that has happened uh, within five, almost six years. And I just wow. we just put out a book. I just put out book number twenty two a couple of weeks ago, which is Destiny to Dallas, and that is co written with. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys assistant O-line coach, Coach Ramon Chin Young. Nice. And, uh, yeah, we share our journeys. He was a former high school coach uh, in the area close. We, com we're, you know, competed against each other. You know, we hit it off. <laughs> and so we are just, you know, sharing our journeys of from classroom, what we learn, you know, lessons from our journey, relationships, family, individual growth. We share about those. And really, we're hoping for it to be a resource for, uh, coaches and leaders oh yeah that sounds so powerful I'm glad you're doing that and yeah. who would have ever thought you know we never know where our journey is going to take us and no we meet one person and another person and we have a little idea in the back of our head and somebody says well let's take that idea and do something with it I yeah. love love that you do that so are you still a coach right now what is what is your your entrepreneurial job I'll put it that well, way you know, I look at, I look at it like this you know once a coach always a coach yeah uh, <laughs> but uh because that's what people still call me uh but uh <laughs> well, not uh I'm not I coached for so I'm in my 26th year of education now I wow. coached for 20 of those years and um you know I'm, I'm not actually in coaching any longer but what I do now is I coach coaches you know, like uh, I'm old enough now to where, you know, I have guys that I coach that are head coaches. <laughs> oh, know? nice. So, so I mentor coaches, uh, mentored a few of them. And uh, I say coach coaches, speak to coaching staffs, uh, speak, you know, do a lot of speaking to teams. You know, those guys bring me in to be around their teams and pour into uh, them. And so um, not specifically sport coaching, but I'm – on sidelines, I'm at practices, <laughs> I'm in the locker rooms. So <laughs> yes and no, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Coaching coaches, I guess. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um some people might notice that I'm wearing a a sweatshirt, a hoodie called Scars and Stripes Coffee. Have to shout out to my sponsor of the episode. Have the awesome. coffee mug here. And uh uh Sean Ram is who I go with. And he, too, has a powerful journey like that, you know, mm -hmm. injured in the military. This is Scars and Stripes supports the veterans. And this was one way to do that. And then that led to other things. I happened to meet him at um, a little outdoor market where he'd set up a booth for a while. And uh, um, I knew some of the people that were at the market and and. You just you get this aroma in the air and it was just so delightful. Yeah. And it's sure. like, because because I am a coffee connoisseur. Now, this is going to sound strange. I don't drink coffee because I don't like the bitter aftertaste. But uh -huh. I can make the best coffee because I know what the smell is. What, to, what uh, you know, if it just lifts you up and carries you away, that's the best coffee right there. Mm -hmm. And so um, we got this from my husband. We thought we'd try it you know, support our veterans. And wow, we were really amazed. It's just great coffee. They even have decaf. I really can't drink coffee or, or other things mm -hmm. because I can't have the caffeine. Um, but it's just wonderful. So there's a shout out to my sponsor, Scars and Stripes Coffee from Sean Ram. And it's S-E-A-N-R-A-M-M -M when you go to the website. So mm -hmm. now we can go to, <laughs> we'll transition over to your life story. So you were a mm -hmm. coach. And, and we kind of know a little bit about how you got into writing, but um, how did you get to be a coach? Well, that, that, that goes back to my upbringing. Um, I'm a fourth generation educator. You know, my mother, oh. grandmother, great grandmother were educators. Um, uh, you know, I, t I say this all the time. You know, I come from a family of church folk <laughs> and educators, you know, folk with no S meaning that we yep. went to church a lot. And uh, <laughs> the reason is because my mother and my grandmother, they were ministers of music in our churches. And so uh, I'm uh, truly nice. grateful uh, for that upbringing uh, because, you know, those two things, education 
uh, faith base, it showed me that service was important. It showed me that it was important to understand that it's bigger than me. Uh, yeah. It showed me that um, it was important to understand that the big man has given all of us a special gift, special gifts and talents. And it's our job to tap in and figure out what those special gifts and talents are so that we can give those to others. And so that's kind of the foundation of, of, of who I am, where I come from, what was poured into me, what was instilled into me. And so, you know, I've just strived to live a life of um, exhibiting those traits to make those people proud. And so I played four sports for four years in high school, played college football at West Texas a and University, got my degree there. And, um, you know, I knew I loved sports and I loved giving service, um, you know, loved being around kids. And so the only natural thing to do was to teach and to coach. And so, yep. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I fell right into that, if you will. Uh, and it was, it's been, a, that's been a great journey too. started in a couple of junior highs and worked my way up. I was the offensive line. Well, then went to Oak Ridge high school. I was the offensive line coach and head powerlifting coach at Conroe High School for 12 years. Then I had an opportunity to go to my hometown in Hearn, Texas, and be head coach, athletic director uh, for a couple years. I did that. And then uh, after that, came back to Conroe School District to Oak Ridge uh, High School, where I was there for eight years. Uh, then I took a jump out for a little bit, and I was an ambassador for Hartwell University College, online great uh, online university that helps uh, people get education degrees. I did that for a little bit. And then now yes. currently I'm at New Waverly High School. Wow. Wow. And, and my background is special education. That's my teaching field. So. Oh, good. Good. Mm -hmm. That's a good background to have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so kind of, you know, keeping with, with, you know, we have the theme of entrepreneur culture and lifestyle mm -hmm. is even though you have these other jobs, you still reach out to do other things. Um, you know, writing a book is not an easy chore. It's, it takes work. You have to rely on other people, um, yeah. you know, to do the cover, to help you organize it all together. You have to rely on the writers to get their stuff to you in yes. time. And, yes. and uh, so, so in that entrepreneurial part of that, how do you make that harmonize with your job and your family and everything else that's going on. I think there's a, as I, as I hear you say that um, there's three things that come to mind for me. I think um, first is prioritizing, right? Mm -hmm. It's important to prioritize what's important to you. And then uh, once you do that, then you go, uh, then you, you find ways to balance your time. Right. So that's the second thing. So prioritize what's important. I've prioritized what's important to me. All right. I have like 10 things that I work on daily and I don't do anything outside of that. Right. And so oh, then wow. from there it goes into the balance of, you know, faith, family, you know, job, you know, so I balance all of those things um, with that. And then the third thing is just, um, putting in the work to have continuous growth. All right. And so um, I've strived to always have self-reflection. I look at myself daily, say, you know, Hey Chip, you know, how did, and that was pretty good and do more of that tomorrow. You know, Hey, Ooh, man, you blew that. Like, don't do that again. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> right. Uh, and, you know, strive to be better tomorrow. And so each day just have, stack your days, have incremental growth. And um, it's brought me to a 26 year career in education. It's brought wow. me to 22 books, uh, several being bestsellers. It's brought me to f almost 400 episodes of my YouTube channel and podcast. Um, nice. and just so just so many things. It's, it's brought me so many amazing relationships with great people that are also doing great things that I can learn and grow with uh, in my life. And uh, it's truly been a blessing for me. And I'm just, you know, in the moment, enjoying the moments each day. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. 
um, a little later today, uh, which today is Saturday, the 21st of September, because I know this will go out and it'll be past that. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing a talk on um, doing giving a talk on dangerous purpose. Mm -hmm. And and so wow, good. I'm just listening to what you're saying. And a lot of what you're saying is what I'm putting in here is you've got that fear of, I don't know if I can do it. It's scary. This is out of my comfort zone. Um, what is one way you use to, to know, should I try this or should I try that? How do you make the decision um, to go through something you've never done before or and the second part of that would be have you ever been afraid to try something does something seem too dangerous for you so first part how do i do that i think uh the answer to that for me would be you know realizing like is it in my lane do i feel that it would allow me to have growth um you know Will the choice I make to do this will it will it help me move forward or hold me back, right? Mm -hmm. And if it'll help me move forward, then now my mindset is of a growth mindset. Now let's go attack it, right? Let's go <laughs> make it happen. Let's go get it. You might have heard that before. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's go get it. Let's go make it happen. And um, you know, I believe that reps make us better. You know, yeah. the more we put ourselves out there to do things, the the more better we get, if you will. <laughs> You know, and so um, that's kind of my my process of how do I you know decipher you know what I do, and then the other the other piece of that. What was the other piece of the question? Is have you ever been afraid? Have you found something a little too dangerous or annoying? You don't know what the the reward yeah. is, so there's a great risk in that. Oh yeah, for sure. You yeah, know, but I've learned in my life that you have to just do it afraid. You know, like if, uh, you know, like for example, uh, prime example is for me in college, right? So uh, where I where I went to college is like a nine and a half hour drive from my hometown, still in the state of Texas. Yeah, <laughs> that's how big it is. <laughs> Crazy. Texas is so big, huge. Um, <laughs> but it was a nine and a half hour drive from my hometown. Uh, never been there before. Didn't know anyone there. Um, but I had an opportunity to play college ball and get my education, and right? So I could have said, well, oh, I'm afraid of going and being, and you know, but I also knew what I knew on the other side of that was some amazing things could happen for me in my life, right? I could fulfill my dreams. I could fulfill my purpose. I could get that college degree and get a job to help my, my family, right? And so- yeah. Um, I think when you get in those situations, you really have to tap into your why, like, why are you choosing to do this? Right. And if you really tap into that, why, and you understand that you got people depending on you and it's bigger than you, well, you don't even worry about fear. Like that's not even a, a, a option. Like the option is get better or be afraid of it. And the second option ain't, is not an option. <laughs> right? right. So it's, it's just get better. <laughs> right. Like whatever I have to do, to jump in there and go attack it, to get better, to be the best version of myself. Come on, let's go. Let's go make it happen. And so wow. and that's what it was for me. You know, I, I went there and, you know, ended up meeting some amazing people, uh, you know, college teammates, uh, mentors, people I still talk to today. Yeah. Um, you know, I was able to get that college degree that I, you know, that I wanted play ball, be able to help my family. But what if I had chosen fear? Who? What if I had chosen fear over faith? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have to choose faith over fear because just have the faith that you can do it. Know that yeah. you are capable. And even along the journey in your trying to do it, you're going to learn so many valuable lessons, even if you make a mistake, even if you fail, like you're going to learn so many valuable things about the world and yourself that you're going to be better for taking the step. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I just, I think failure is a dirty word. 
just yes. because you learn from it. It's just something right. you tried that didn't work. And it, so mm-hmm. you find out why it didn't work. And and maybe it's just not your time, you know, or maybe it's something that works better for somebody else. But you learn from that and you learn what works for you. Um, yeah, my, my mindset shift has been this um, for a long time. I believe that it's not winning and losing. I believe that it's winning and learning. Oh, I like that. Right. Like because that. you're gonna you're gonna learn so many valuable lessons if you're if you have a growth mindset and you have a proper perspective. Right. Yeah. And because you'll see that same situation again in your life, or you'll know somebody that will have to grow through that situation. And now what happens is it makes you more equipped uh to get better, it makes you more equipped to help others because of the learning that you've done in your life. Yeah. It's all about winning. <laughs> it's nothing yep. else but winning because you're winning when you're yep. learning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So did you ever have times that that you had doubts? It's like, what am I doing? Why did I even start this? Yes, but not a lot. Um, yeah. Because like I'm a person where I'm going to think about it. I'm going to weigh out the options. You know, I'm going to maybe even write down my positives and negatives. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to get do my research. Uh, I'm going to do all the prior work uh, when I make any type of decision. And now once I make that decision, I'm two feet in that thing, man. Let's go. Yeah. Like there is no, there is no press the brake. No, all gas, no brakes. That's right. <laughs> right? Like, like once I make the Rip decision. Rip them out of that go- car. We're just going. <laughs> it's go time, baby. You know, it's um. You know, once I make a decision. But I think what we have to do initially is do the proper work to do the research and, and um, make sure we're putting ourselves in great situations uh, that will allow us to be successful and that's conducive to growth. And so I think... Yes. Um, when you do that, there's less doubt um, or, or or lack of confidence because you know that um, on the other side of these challenges, you're going to have maximum growth. Right. Right. Yeah, that's really great advice. Um, speaking of advice, what advice would you have for somebody who – who is, well, we'll do, we'll do two types. We'll start with the one that is just starting out trying to, you know, maybe they haven't figured out their purpose. You know, what do you Mm -hmm. do with when a young man comes up to you and says, coach, I just, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. That's so good because, um, that's my thing right there. (laughs) I, I believe that, um, we're the sum, I'm going to give them a little math here on the porch, right? Some little wisdom math. So <laughs> I believe the sum total of who we are is our E plus E plus R plus A. Okay, the sum total of who we are is our E plus E plus R plus A. And the first E is is environments, right? Um you know, where we have grown up in our life, you know, we learn things from that. The next thing is E is experiences, right? Like what experiences have I had in my life uh, that have either moved me forward or held me back? And what did I learn from that? The R is relationships, right? What key quality relationships have I experienced in my life and what have I learned from those, the good and the bad, right? And then the A is actions. And that's the most important. Like, what actions have I taken in my life, again, that have moved me forward or held me back? And I believe that when we reflect on those four things, um, it'll give us a clarity of what our purpose is. And And I'll go deeper with that. What I mean by that is, Okay, example, I'll just use me. So environment, I grew up in a, I was born in Dallas. Um, You know, my my dad was from South Dallas. 
my uh, mother, small town, Hearn, Texas, right? Educated. Both great sides of the family, growth, great people. So I was born in Dallas. Parents separated when I was four. We moved to my mom's hometown of Hearn. Uh, you know, I would go visit my father, my father's family. So, so I've seen both of those worlds, right? That's my environments that I've seen. So I've seen fast city life. I've seen quiet, small town life. I've seen people of all races, of all backgrounds, of all, you know, all of that stuff. So that's my environments, my experiences. You know, I've told you about my education. I've told you about my mm -hmm. sports. I've told you about all of those things, relationships, you know, you know, talk a little bit about those, you know, great people I've been blessed to be around, you know, relationships, all kinds of relationships, people pour into me. I've tried to pour into people, actions, um, you know, my education, you know, what have I done to make myself better? You know, I have a couple degrees, uh, you know, just different things. I've invested in uh, classes and things to grow, to be better in my craft, right? So that's my E-E-R-A so what I figured out is like, okay, so, right, I'm equipped to help people based off of the things that I've experienced in my life, right? So like, for example, as a teacher, as a coach, I know what it looks like for a kid to to hurt and, and not have what they need because I've seen that or I've experienced that, right? I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. For a kid to be raised with a single parent, right? Yeah. Mom or, you know, mom is working three and four jobs just to make it work. And, you know, the kid is pretty much, you know, have to be responsible and take care of itself. So this kid is injured, like, and he normally walks home. Well, I got to take him home and I got to get him some food to make sure that he's taken care of because there ain't nobody at home. Mama's at work. <laughs> you know, I know that because I've experienced that. Right. And so like the kids like, man, that's great. The mom's like, man, thank you so much. Like what y'all don't know is like, I've been through this before. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So just, that's just one example of that. But, but I think, you know, when we understand and, and really I share that because that is, that's a framework that I use that I teach. Right. I think the sum total of who we are is our E plus E plus R plus A. I think when we can understand that, um, it gives us what our clarity and what our, it gives us clarity on what our purpose is. Yeah. I like that you broke it down a little bit, you know, talking mm -hmm. about relationships, you were talking about, I think, key elements in those relationships and then actions is what moved you or what held you back. Um, yeah. Put me forward. And then you counted that all as being equipped. You know, I have a little sign in my prayer room that says, God, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips he those. The called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, and you just showed a great way of being equipped. It's not like we have to go out and, and take this four year course to learn how to be something where we've never right. been before. We're already that. So you're already equipped. I mean, that's, that's powerful right there. There's that, that, I'm going to call it a titanium nugget from today. You're already mm -hmm. equipped. And then now, that's the thing. What do you that's do the with thing it? Too, like, um, um, and in that, on top of that, when I share that with people, um, it shows you that you, you have value. You're enough, right? You don't have to uh, search and seek for other. No, no you're enough, yeah. <laughs> you know, what you, yeah. <laughs> what you, what you have, who you are, what you do. No, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, That's enough yeah. to, to, to continue to grow. That's enough uh, to, to help others. That's enough to do whatever it is you want to do and achieve in the world. It's enough. Yeah. Right. So Absolutely. Now go get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the things I've been saying. I have it in my books. I said mm -hmm. it on many of my podcasts is, you have great value in you because of all those things that you've yes. gone through. That's where your value is. And mm -hmm. your worth is in that value, not what you do or what people say you are or, or anything. And all of that is like you're saying, that is enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do matter in this world. You know, so go go attack it. Don't worry about what's dangerous or not. <laughs> yeah. that's go it. and I learn. I think too, um, I'll share this analogy. So you talked about great value, 
And, you know, mm -hmm. those of us that, you know, have been around like Walmart, you know, they have a brand that's great value, right? Oh, I never and thought so, of that. <laughs> and so if I, if I am in HEB and I see something and it has great value on it, well, that's going to be out of place, right? Yeah. Or if I go to Kroger, they don't have great value in Kroger. Um, that's going to be out of place, right? And so yeah. I say that because of this. Even in our life, if we have great value, which we all do, it's important to place our, our put ourselves in the right environments and situations, um, so that so that we fit and have the growth and do the things that we're supposed to do. Because we can have great value, but we can choose to put ourselves in negative or bad situations, right. and it hinders us our growth. And so, yeah. I think it's important to to be aware of the situations that we place ourselves in. Absolutely. And that we do have great value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and one of the things I talk about is you don't ever have to worry about losing value. I don't understand no. the theory that goes behind it. But every time you give value away, even a little bit of it, you always get more back. And you just never run out of value. It's always there. As long as you're here, there's always value in you. Um, yeah, let's 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 do this analogy. So picture like a, a hundred dollar bill, right? Um, it's a fresh, crisp, crisp, crispy <laughs> emphasis on the psst, crisp. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fresh <laughs> it's a fresh, crisp one hundred dollar bill, you know, from the bank. It's all ironed and crispy. Um yeah. well, you know, if I wrinkle that $100 bill up and then you know it's all wrinkly if you will and I pull it back out it's still worth $100 yeah if I if I drop it in the mud or step on it or you know even have a little tear in it it's still worth $100 and so um you know in our life our value is the same way yeah you know, we're, we're gonna go through some storms and we're going to see some tough things and get wrinkly, if you will, uh, you know, and, yeah, and get up and, and do all kinds of things. And, but we still have value. But the beauty of that in us is we can we can add value uh, by experiencing those things. It yeah. makes us more valuable um, on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, you trade in that hundred dollar bill, all of a sudden you realize it's a thousand dollar bill. It's a thousand dollar bill. Yeah. Oh man, and that's exciting when you add that value like that. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. Oh, definitely. Well, Chip, how do people get a hold of you if they want to be coached by you? Yeah. So all of my social media is at Chip Baker T S C as in the Success Chronicles. All of my social media is that except for X and it's Chip Baker 19. Uh, I'm on all platforms. Um, and so, you know, I love for you to go, you know, like the, the typical like, follow, subscribe, leave a comment, all of that. Sure. That's fine. Do that. But, but I just asked that if you go on and you see something that you like, and there's someone that you love and care about that comes to mind or to heart for you, I ask that you would just share with them in hopes yeah. to make our world a better place. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. Chip, thank you so much for being here. Gosh, I, yes. I want five hours with you. <laughs> that makes <laughs> for so a long much show. For me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have thank to go so to one of your events. Me. Oh, definitely. Every time, every time I'm I'm just so honored that that you were willing to come and, and talk with my audience and with me oh, again. My pleasure. And, Definitely looking forward to the next book, especially the one with the other coach. That's so exciting. Yes, yes. I really am exciting to, to read that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I thank you um, for your heart and who you are and what you're about uh, because it makes a huge difference. And uh, you know, I'm grateful that the big man has allowed us to cross paths because Me I too. feel that, you know, I talked about those relationship pieces. You know, I feel that I have I am better because of the relationship that I've Aww. been blessed to have with you. And so uh, I'm grateful for that. And and I wish you continued success in all of the things that you do, because what you do is you do it to help others. And what oh, yeah. Heart. 
Yeah, that's yeah. all about it. You know, if it's not helping anybody else, why do yeah. it? That's, you know, where sure. I'm thinking. For sure. It's like, yeah. And again, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Scars and Stripes, Sean <laughs> Ram, for sponsoring this episode. And you can sponsor an episode or you can sponsor a whole season if you'd like. Get a hold of us. You contact us through email at info at wisdomonthefrontporch.com. And Chip, thank you again for being here. And we'll see you next time on Wisdom on the Front Porch. <laughs> thank you for joining us today on Wisdom on the Front Porch with your host, Ellis Kirkpatrick. You can find us on our website, wisdomonthefrontporch.com, see previous episodes of the podcast, and view issues of the magazine. Did you know you can submit questions, leave reviews, or suggest topics? You can also tell us where your favorite front porch location is and what it means to you. We hope you gain value and insight from today's or previous talks. We appreciate your support for us so we can continue to provide value and expertise to you and others. Subscribe to Wisdom on the Front Porch magazine and receive a second year absolutely free. This is a limited time offer available exclusively to those who mention the name of today's podcast. Join in next week when we bring you another great insight into the world of entrepreneur culture and lifestyle. Make today a great day always believe that something wonderful is going to happen.